So, I have some questions. The train in Ohio that derailed, they decided in their infinite wisdom, the rail workers there decided in their infinite wisdom that the best potential option here was to blow it up, was to intentionally set charges on it to blow holes in it. Their reason was that this stuff might explode. So obviously, the best possible shot they had was to explode it. It might explode, so let's put explosives on it. Um, and, and while this happened, they followed exactly zero of the procedures surrounding it. You know, the normal procedures surrounding vinyl chloride are that leaks should be stopped as soon as possible. Not that they should be encouraged by blowing holes in it. And that all sources of ignition must be eliminated. Because vinyl chloride vapor can travel to an ignition source and flash back, causing a flash fire. So, this is on the official government site for how to deal with vinyl chloride. This is, this is the official cleanup methods thing on NIH.gov. Because this stuff is extremely unhealthy and very carcinogenic. So, they obviously made the best choice. There's no way they could be corrupt. Um, and we should blame uh, Trump and anyone else who might have stymied union efforts and or helped them deregulate, right? Except, of course, Biden. We shouldn't blame Biden at all. He's doing his best. He's sister slaying. Um, and we should do that because the bigwigs in charge make bad decisions without unions. Except the decision to light a train on fire that's full of a bunch of stuff that they're supposed to keep away from ignition sources. Their choice to add ignition sources in the form of explosives to a train that they're not supposed to have near ignition sources. Just not feeling it, you know. And we're supposed to accept that solution uncritically, even though... The reason that the unions keep being brought up is because non-union decisions based on what the bigwigs wanted are somehow compromised, right? Because these things should be decided by more than, you know, a select few group of people. And so the workers needed to be able to unionize and this is just another example of corporate greed allowing deregulation and hazardous materials spilling are just a, a consequence of this greed and overrun. Except the people who made the decision to blow it up on purpose. You're not allowed to criticize that. You're also not allowed to criticize the EPA for not being there. Um you know, or for lying about the quality of the air and water, saying that they're safe and that you can go back home and ignore all the dead animals floating in the river and ignore your dying pets, ignore your sick relatives, ignore all of that. Just come back. Do your wage slave job, wagey. 
if you don't work if you don't work the machines then they will start to go down and we will have nothing more to pretend to protect so go back to work get back to work get back to consuming if you cry too much because of the chlorine fumes in the air suck it up and watch some netflix order some doordash stay inside or FEMA basically not doing anything at all. Meanwhile, so many funds and resources went to things like COVID. And meanwhile, over $100 billion was sent to Ukraine last year. And meanwhile, inflation is high again. And higher than it needed to be at this time of year. And... Gradually, the economy is starting to weaken. All of this, you know, during a time when the military-industrial complex is doing gangbusters because the U.S. is the biggest weapons exporter in the world and it's currently exporting a lot of weapons to other countries to give to Ukraine. And to replenish its stockpiles. Because it has a nice benefit giving all these weapons that you can give your weapons that you already had and then say, hey, we're running out of weapons. Can you give us your new shiny stuff? It's a really easy way to just run through your current arsenal of all this old, dilapidated, depreciated stuff and then say, hey, this is an excuse to buy all this new stuff that's going to be much more efficient at killing people. So the military-industrial complex is doing great. You know, BAE Systems, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon. Fucking all these military-industrialists are loving this right now. But the primary economy is showing higher levels of homelessness. Um, You know record layoffs, a ton of um, sort of economic red flags, uh, the the avian flu causing uh, uh, egg and, and poultry shortage, allegedly, unless that's also a manufactured crisis, yet more train derailments happening elsewhere with more chemical spills happening there. Um, during earthquakes that are fucking shit up during wars that are fucking shit up all of these crises happening at once you know but they don't have like a couple billy to throw at not polluting the entirety of Ohio and at not polluting everything downstream on the Ohio River right they don't have any uh, spare funds for bottled water um, or giant water purification systems or anything like that that they can give to a bunch of people who literally can't drink the now carcinogenic water that's the result of the chemical reaction of burning vinyl chloride, which turns very carcinogenic very quickly, right? They don't have money to help these people who now have water that's killing the animals in it get water that won't kill them. They didn't have money to fix Flint, Michigan. They didn't have money to shut down Red Hill in Hawaii. They didn't have money to shut down uh, the, the, the chemical runoff that's like d making Texas the worst water in the country. They don't have money for shit here, but they have a hundred billion dollars for Ukraine and more to replenish their own military industrial complex. They, they have all these resources. And during COVID, they had no problem calling it a state of emergency so that they could get war powers and emergency 
use authorizations and shit like that so that they could contain a pandemic, right? But now that it's an, like multi-chemical spill, including vinyl chloride, that's belching enough black smoke that it's visible from space, they don't have a scent to spare. They couldn't go there and use some what are called sorbents. They couldn't erect barriers. They couldn't do jack shit. And now that the water is contaminated, are they there cleaning it up? Are they giving this the same level of, like, care that they're giving literally anything else or that they gave COVID? No. Did they give Pentagon money uh, to scramble the National Guard to go do some river cleanup? No. Did they do jack fucking shit but lie to you and tell you that it was safe to return there and go back to job wagey? No. So I have some questions like, why are we not allowed to ask questions about whether or not it was a good idea to blow up a train intentionally full of stuff that your own government websites are telling us you should remove ignition sources from? You know? Why, why are we not allowed to ask why this happened and, and why, just to be super clear, um, we should trust the same people that we need to unionize against? Right? I thought, I thought that this was a result of, of too much power concentrated in the hands of wealthy magnates, Right? But suddenly we need to unquestioningly accept that power. I got questions. Um, and, and, and while I'm asking questions, let me just finish reading this. Because of the explosive hazard, fire at a leak must not be extinguished unless the leak is simultaneously closed. They're doing a great job of that. In the event of a spillage, Liquid should be contained and discharges to streams or sewer systems prevented. Well, they didn't do a very good job of that now, did they? <laughs> that shit's in all the water. That shit's in all the streams and sewer systems. And it's saying that people performing the cleanup should have full protective equipment and positive pressure breathing apparatuses. But you can live in a town full of this shit, can't you? You can go back to work and act like it's business as usual while Fido chokes his last breaths, vomits, shits himself, and dies in front of you, so you have to explain to your kids how death works because their dog died. But it's safe for you, right? I have questions. Like, why, if this thing says you're supposed to evacuate and restrict persons not wearing protective equipment from the area of the spill or leak until the cleanup is complete? Why, if the cleanup is so impossibly hard that you're not even starting or trying, and infesting rivers and plants and everything in, in such a gigantic radius... That basically the entire state and certain states downstream are fucked. Why are they still saying that it's safe to go back? Remove all ignition sources. Well, shit, let's add bombs. Establish forced ventilation to keep levels below explosive limit. Well, they didn't really need to do that. They're outside. They didn't need a ventilate area of leak to disperse the gas because, like, you know, you're outside. That's basically all you can do. Um, as far as I'm aware, they didn't even try to stop the flow of gas. And I didn't see any fucking barriers, which is what it says later. You know? I didn't see them working through it with sorbents. If source of leak is a cylinder and the leak cannot be sh stopped in place, remove leaking cylinder to a safe place in the open air and repair leak or allow cylinder to empty. 
keep this chemical out of confined space, such as a sewer, because of the possibility of explosion, unless the sewer is designed to prevent the buildup of explosive concentrations. It may be necessary to contain and dispose of this chemical as a hazardous waste. But aerosolize it and make giant fucking clouds that are so big they are affecting neighboring states, right? Because keep in mind, not all of this is burning. Some of it is burning, but some of it is being carried by the clouds everywhere else. So the air is full of hydrochloric acid, and the air is full of the carcinogenic chemical reaction that vinyl chloride turns into, because they made the choice to, instead of removing ignition sources and preventing explosions, saying, hey, this might explode. Should we blow it up? <laughs> what? <laughs> I have questions. Um, and then it says some, some convenient things, because when I've brought this up before, I had fucking morons telling me that it's like, oh, it's a fucking uh, industrial environment this is discussing. Well, no, it's not. Because it's also including instructions specifically for both land and water spills. That you're supposed to construct barriers to contain the spill. I didn't see jack fucking shit barriers there, did you? that they're supposed to absorb small amounts of the spill with natural or synthetic sorbents. I didn't see fucking shit sorbents, did you? How many sorbents did they try? How many barriers did they try before they said, this might blow up, let's beat it to the punch? Shovel into containers with covers. Where did that happen? How much of this shit did they do? For the land spill component. And then, water spill. Contain contaminated water with dams or natural barriers. I don't see them trying to stem the tide of the Ohio River or put any of the oil spill skimmers on the top of it to at least mitigate this fucking problem and catch the stuff that's floating on the surface. Much less the stuff that's bad enough that it's killing all the fish and making them float to the surface. I don't see them doing shit that they're supposed to, and I see them doing shit that they're not supposed to, and I have questions, but I'm not allowed to ask these questions, because all fucking afternoon, I've been in an argument about this with, like, a couple of people who probably represent a significant amount of the people in this fucking country, and all around the world, who are just willing to buy that the best decision was made and that you're not allowed to ask fucking questions. So let me ask you, in the comments, let me know if you have fucking questions. Because I think we should all have fucking questions about what could quite possibly be the worst ecological disaster the US has seen in fucking decades! And maybe ask why we need a government and all these environmental protectors and shit if they're not going to do fucking garbage during this sort of situation. And they're going to tell you it's safe while everything around you dies! I have questions, and I think all these questions are a really good reason to smash the fucking stake.